All right, now back to Edson Range here. The rain, the rain affecting the target. The target's lashed in the carriage. All of a sudden we have a nice rain coming down. Really won't affect it. If we have a downpour coming, that target's gonna melt off the doggone target face and we'll probably stop the course of fire if it rains that heavy. More likely, it'll be a no, unless it's a really heavy rain, understand? <coughs> now, the rain, here you are in my firing line. It's raining out. Will that, you think, affect your morale while you're trying to shoot a rolling shot? Yes, sir. Correct. It can affect you. How you fight back against the rain is this. You can issue those Gumby suits, right? Yes, sir. You'll take your rain protective suit, you put on your trousers, put on your rain suit top, flip up your hood, you have your glove on your hand, and now you're high and dry. If you lay in my wet tar, you won't feel warm, but you won't feel wet either, will you? No, sir. The only downside about wearing your Gumby suit is, if you move a lot and sweat a lot, you become just as wet on the inside as you are on the outside. The only difference is, you're warm and wet on the inside, instead of cold and wet. So, make use of your Gumby suit to fight back against the rain. Once again, the rain will affect you on the shoot to the firing line. However, if you wear your rain gear and have a positive attitude of a Marine Corps recruit, you will overcome, survive, and adapt, won't you? Yes, sir! No one here is going to quit because it's raining, right? No, sir! All right, now, here's my round of projectiles arcing through the air going down range. Will that rain pitter-patter move that rain projectile off course? Yes, yes sir! sir. Now, yes, for our purposes, with our M855 NATO ball round, we're arcing through the air at several thousand feet per second. The distances we shoot, that's a big negative. For our purposes here, that will not be a problem for us. Okay, my favorite factor, wind. Wind, we saw it yesterday and we could feel it this morning. Wind is a constant thing around here at this rifle range, understand? Yes, sir. Now, wind affecting the target itself down there. Will the wind affect that thing? Yes, Probably sir. not, but for most of our purposes, the wind will not affect the target. Now, wind on you, the shooter on the fine line. Who thinks that's going to affect them? Good, right sir. you are. In my good positions like the prone, no. The, knee, the sitting, not really. But the kneeling position and the standing position, now you can feel that wind pushing on you, trying to move you. Yes, that will affect you, and this is all how, how you deal with it. When you're in the standing position and the kneeling position, just know this, you got two options. One, you stand there and you wait, and you wait, and you feel. All of a sudden, the wind stops gusting. There's a lull in the wind, shoot. <coughs> or, if you're running out of time, and the, or the wind's constant, the only thing you can do is tighten up your position and go with it, understand? Yes, do the best you can. That's your two options in dealing with the wind on the firing line. Either A, try to wait it out and wait for a lull, if you have the time, or take and tighten your position and just go for with the best job you can, understand? Yes, sir. Last but not least, the wind on the projectile. Who feels that as that round arcs down range, the wind's gonna knock that sucker out of, off its course? Who feels it won't? The wind won't even be a factor. Very good. The wind will be a factor. Put a large, thick Y there. That is our number one pain in the butt is the wind. And once again, it's another training aid for backtracking, showing the effect of light on the front sight post. Once again, light for you, the shooter. Not only will it affect your, what you see downrange of the target, it might shade part of your <coughs> sights as well, understand? Yes, sir. Incidentally, have we been to the PX yet? No, uh, sir. Any of this stuff? Oh, no, sir. Sight black? Sir. Yes. When you take your sight black and you spray your front sight post and make it all nice and black, that will alleviate this problem of the sun shining on the sights, understand? Yes, sir. An, I have an old saying, if there's glare, glare belongs nowhere, understand? Yes, sir. You will spray the entire front sight assembly. You will spray the wings and guards. You will spray the entire post and the tip. You will spray the outside of the gut wings and guards. If there's glare on your front sight anywhere, get rid of it, understand? Yes, sir. And also your rear sight. Take and do this. You know how we have these nice little yellow paint marks there, right? Yes, sir. Cover those things with your finger and then spray the back, the rear sight aperture too, just like that. Get all the freaking front sight, the rear sight assembly all blackened in, but don't cover the paint <coughs> marks, understand? Yes, sir. That way, when you look through your sights, you see black, coal black sights everywhere with no glare. It allows you to focus on your sights and hit what you're shooting at, understand? Yes, sir. 
Now, the wind. This little doggone diagram here depicts the effective wind on the round. Here's you sitting on the firing line here. Here's the target there. You have your line of sight. You're aiming through your sights right at the target. However, your projectile, as it goes down range, gets blown off course. That's the whole idea behind the doggone diagram, understand? Yes, sir. Simple effect, the wind, if it pushes on it. And also notice this, the further the round travels, the more the wind has effect on how far it pushes it. So the further you are away, if you're 200 meters, not much, 300 meters, some, 500 meters, a lot of wind effect, understand? Yes, sir. Okay, once again, there's a little rifle range, 200 meter line, 300 meter line, 500 meter line, and you got your berm lines left and right, and you got your impact area here down, down here. Target one's always on the left, target 50's on the right. Okay, once again, we look at big clock out of the range. If we're sitting down here, 500 meter line, this is what o'clock? Six o'clock, sir. Check. Six o'clock in this area, and up here is always 12 o'clock, sir. Big time. And consequently, over here would be 9 o'clock, sir. And over here would be 3 o'clock, sir. Check. All right. Just to keep, gets you not a visual idea there. But once again, you are sitting at six in the bleachers, my chalkboard is 12. We have to figure out where the wind is coming from and where it's going to. In this case right now, the wind is becoming from where and going to where? Eight to two, sir. Eight to where? Eight to two, sir. Close enough. And what would direction would this be? Six, sir. This would consequently be? Six, sir. And this would be about what? Okay, very good. I heard several different answers. Remember this, we're right on top of this thing, and sometimes we have little variances in our answers, don't we? Yes, sir. That can happen. That's why you have to take your best swag at it sometimes. We, what we know is a swag is? Yes, sir. A guess. Scientific wild-ass guess. You must do your best to take and estimate what the flag is doing. Remember, the point is, figure out where the wind is coming from, and where it's going to to, where it's going to. That's how you have to figure out your wind direction, understand? Yes, sir. Once we got the wind direction, we have to give the wind a value. <laughs> the Marine Corps divides our wind into three type of values, and the values related in terms of how much strength the wind is applying to the flight path of our bullet. Now, what direction is this wind again? Six to twelve, sir. Six to twelve. Okay. Is this wind pushing the round off course to the left or right? No, sir. So consequently, what value would it have? No, sir. How about a headwind? What direction is this wind blowing? Twelve, sir. Is it pushing the wind round off course left or right? No, sir. Nope, it will not. So once again, it's what value? No, sir. Big time. Now, those of you who studied a little bit of geometry, if this is the flight path of my bullet, what kind of angle is this? Right. 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 Or how many degrees? Right. 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 90 degree angle. That means it's coming squarely at it at full ang or at a full angle or what kind of strength? Full right. 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 Full strength or what kind of value? Full right. 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 Exactly. <laughs> it was and that would be like what wind direction? Which would be three nine, three nine, three nine, sir. Three nine to three. Or three nine, sir. full strength, full value. So that's just the idea. The entire flight path of the bullet, the bullet as it travels, is being pushed on squarely by the wind. Now, what direction is this? And this would be about. Okay, and how about this then? How about this? Four to ten, sir. All those examples are, if this is the flight path around again, all those are coming at like angles like this, correct? Yes, sir. And that would be what kind of value? Half value. It's not, it's not full strength, but it's got some effect, so we simply call it half value. So that means if you're taking your best strained eye, look down range, going, well, is that two to, is that eight to two, or is that seven to one? Either case, it's both of them would be what value? Half value, sir. So you're in the ballpark, right? Yes, sir. Heavy on the left foot. Heavy on the left foot. A clap on the left foot. Clap on the left foot. Get motivated. Get motivated. I get a little excited. Get a little excited. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. P T. P T. Good for me. Good for me. Good for you. Good for you. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Marine Corps.